And thanks to the Commonwealth Bank too, they brought their big brass down with Adrian Smith and it was a really good night. And the other thing that's interesting is a lot of city people came down just for the seminar and there seems to be a renewed interest in the Flurio because honestly, the buying down there is amazing and the upside uh, is greater than probably most areas around the state. So uh, stay tuned and watch over the next couple of years as those that are taking the leap now are probably going to be rewarded well, I think. Now in the studio is a very long-standing, I won't say old because he's a lot younger than me, but a uh, long-standing friend and business acquaintance um, and it's Chris Gill who's the proprietor at Courses Conveyancing. Welcome Chris. Thank you Anthony for having me on the show. Yeah, now Chris you're not new to the show because you're the man we always go to you and a couple of people about legal issues and what's happening you know, in that side of the market. Last Wednesday, um, just in the advertiser front page, there was an article about swimming pools and potentially uh, new legislation. We've had a drowning this week, which has made it extremely topical. A uh, terrible thing, a toddler drowned during the week. Talk to me about your understanding of where the legislation is going for those that have pools or thinking of putting a pool in. I think um, the problem at the moment with the legislation is it's complex and there's two standards. There's a um, legislation for properties, that are swimming pools built before 1 July 1993 and then there's another rule for properties, uh, sorry, for swimming pools built after 1 July 93. Now, children don't differentiate between the age of the pool. So you've got a, a complex rule where people don't know necessarily where they sit. So the difference between the two, if you've got a swimming pool which was built before July 93, if the property is sold, it must, before settlement, have a compliant pool fence. Before 93? Before 93. Right, okay. So yep. it must have a pool fence. Yep. Now, if it was built after 93, you can have other forms of uh, protection, including door closes and limited access out of windows. So where you've got the, the problem is you've got this event of settlement. It must be compliant. How you make it compliant is open to conjecture. And some people believe they're compliant when they're not. And so you have some risk associated with the legislation. What we'd like to see is some consistency and the ability for people to say, okay, if I want to be compliant, and it's a significant fine, I think it's a $15,000 fine or six months imprisonment for, for non-compliance. Okay. So we're not talking just it's to slap serious. on the wrist. Yep. On the wrist. Um, if you have a legislator said, okay, your pool must be entirely compliant and these are the rules. Know how old's your pool, when is it built, all those issues. So where's the date, you know, 93? What, what's that got to do with the prospects? Oh, it's when the Development Act came in. So what the government's view is, and I think it's probably more political than it is any other reason, is they don't want people who have an approval under the current legislation to have to meet a different standard to what was approved at the time. Now, if you build a new swimming pool now, you must have a pool fence. You can't have any door closers as a method of protection. Door closers and 1.5 metre high switch, um, you know, door locks handles. and all yep, that sort of that, stuff. That's yep. not allowed. It must have a pool fence. So you've got a new pool, a, a post-93 pool and a pre-93 pool. Three different lots of legislation. And now, hence the complexity. Now, Chris, I have did a bit of research on this because we have a large rental portfolio. So those of you the landlords, if you've got a swimming pool in your property, you need to listen carefully to this. Um, and we found that there is no proper, organised, certified body for training and giving certification mm -hmm. to go out and look at pools and say they're, they're OK. Um, that apparently is going to happen in the next few months. And then they'll be training South Australian people to then be qualified to certify that the, it's a compliant um, pool. Are you aware of that? Or I wasn't aware of that until only a few weeks ago. Um, I know there's moves afoot. Initially, when the legislation first came in, they did have a list of preferred pool inspectors, but then they didn't have provisions for upgrading their knowledge. So when the changes came through a couple of years ago, there was no requirement on people who were previously authorised to update. And so you had inspectors who weren't up to date with their own knowledge giving inspection uh, certificates. So right. Because with every settlement, and uh, just so people understand, Chris actually does the settlement. So he does the bit after the real estate agent's finished, Chris takes it from uh, sale, which is the contract note, through to settlement. So in your part of the transaction, the compliance for swimming pools is a critical part of what you do. How do you check that that's been done, the work's been done? Um, it's based really on the vendor's representations. If the vendor says the pool is compliant and there's no contractual obligations to, to state or confirm to a purchaser that it's compliant, 
we can only rely on if the vendor says the pool's compliant or I have a certificate that it is a compliant pool. If the purchaser has concerns about its compliance, at the time of contract is the time for them to ensure that the vendor makes it compliant and perhaps provides a certificate for settlement. And that would be the only way of having some absolute certainty that the purchaser isn't going to inherit the, um, the vendor's you know, problems with their um, security. But Chris, without being pedantic, there is no one to certify. So um, who do you take it from? <laughs> the councils can do it. Uh, they, okay. And they can, um, I don't know, for example, the only council is probably fairly proactive in that regard. Okay. But they don't have the resources to go and do it. Um, the Swing Pool and Spa Association, I know, was working on a list. And I've got a list of half a dozen pool inspectors that we know can do the, uh, again, give it a good in, a certificate and also undertake the work to make it compliant if it's necessary. Now, I'll give you an example of, uh, so people understand the sort of things that are going on. Um, probably we sold in Hyde Park, it was about six months ago, and there was um, all opening doors that opened out to this beautiful patio. It was just the most glamorous property. And to be compliant, we actually had to put PK screws, like tech screws, into the door to stop it being able to be opened. And then, of course, the vendor, the seller of the property was clear. What the purchaser did, I don't know, but it was, would have been possible, obviously, for them to take those screws out, but at least it was compliant for settlement. Yeah, so it, it complies with that, um, the compliance for, for settlement. If the purchaser subsequently removes you know, the, the barrier to allow the access to the pool and there's a, a problem, then the purchaser is going to have a, a case to answer. And yeah. that's going to be the issue for a purchaser. But the flip side of that is a vendor can make it compliant, but is that what the purchaser contracted to buy? You know, they bought a property with lovely doors opening out to a pool area. They get there and find out there's no handles right. and it's bolted. And the person said, well, I, I don't accept that as being compliant. It's not what I purchased. We had to put that in the contract. Now, yeah. just moving up a gear, so that's the swimming pools. There are other issues that we need to just let you know, people listening understand there's the compliance required on the smoke detectors. Um, compliance will be, well, certainly in terms of rental properties, it'll be interesting to see with digital TV what's required with new antennas. Are there any other things as a conveyance or as a person who settles the property that come up all the time that we should be aware of? Um, we always get the issue of planning approvals and development approvals, pergolas with approvals, and you know, significant trees. All that legislation is in the process of being upgraded and changed. Um, and it, um, for uh, example, significant trees, now there's, there's a lot lax uh, compared to what it was. But there's no guarantee that you can just go and remove a tree. You still have to go through a process under certain examples. Uh, so you need to, need to be conscious of, of continual changes to legislation, some of which will be publicised and others will just be in, um, enacted by government. So presumably the real estate agent is the front line in educating the consumer because obviously you only, well, most people only sell a home once every nine years. Yep. So is that what, how you'd see it from your end? Yeah, from a, um, well, probably more from a purchaser's point of view. It's the purchaser that's buying it, they want to know what they can do. It, their port of call is to their conveyancer, their lawyer, or perhaps the council. And you know, find out, this is the property I'm looking at, is there anything that I need to be aware of? Is there going to be a four-storey building built next door to me? Are there extensions happening? There's a lot of those changes which don't necessarily, are, they're not necessarily required to be disclosed but they would be of interest to a purchaser and it might affect their enjoyment of the property. Chris, we'll be back with more questions in a minute. Now let's go and look at some sold properties with Going, Going, Gone.